it's me, welcome back to my channel and today I thought I'd do a bit of a sit down and talky video about what I studied at university. It's got to that time of year again when the university term is about to start or if you're one of those that goes back really early, has started or really late will start. Um, if you're either going back to study or going for your first year, good luck, have fun, enjoy it, you'll ace it. And for those in year 12 and 13, you'll probably start hearing the word UCAS a lot. And you're about to start making some pretty big decisions about your future. I remember my UCAS journey, for want of a better word, being really stressful and really upsetting a lot of the time. The degree that I wanted to go and study at university, for all intents and purposes, can be described as niche. It was not something that my parents and especially my UCAS coordinator was really happy with me going to study um, and the road to getting me to university was really quite difficult mostly because the degree or the area that I wanted to pursue at university isn't something that's really on people's radar it's um, really quite different <laughs> it's very useful but not lots of people understand or really know what it is and as I'm all for education, as education helps understanding and removing stigma, I thought I'd make this video so if you're not taken by a lot of the more usual degrees, maybe this will open a door for you. You never know. So without further ado, let's get on to the video. First I will mention that the degree I applied to study at university, the degree I started my university career with and the degree I graduated are three different degrees. That's not to say that I ever fell out of love with the area of study or the department or anything, it was just circumstances at different points in time that led me to make the decisions to switch degrees. Switching degrees is one of those things that is kind of not quite looked down on but it's really not spoken about so I thought that I'd include that here just to know that I did it and I'm really quite alright with it. <laughs> So the degree I graduated with, the degree I hold in its fancy little frame downstairs, is a Bachelor of Arts with Honours in East Asian Studies from the University of Sheffield. I shall get to that a little bit later um, and I shall start with what I began studying at university in my first year. So the degree I started studying was Korean Language with Japanese, also at the University of Sheffield and also a Bachelor of Arts. I'm not going to dance around the fact that it is a very hard degree. Um, you have all the fun of a Korean language pure, you have all the fun of a Japanese minor, and you have all the expectations of both. It's frustrating, it's very intense, but the reward and the feeling when everything starts clicking is second to none. I have so much admiration for the kids that continued with that degree all the way till final year and actually graduated with it. Well done to you, you troopers. The way East Asian languages are taught at Sheffield is everyone starts from scratch, you, ha you don't have to have any prior knowledge at all, um, your teachers take you right through from alphabets and putting words together through to putting sentences together and then holding conversations. It is endlessly frustrating though, learning a language at the age of 4 or 5 is way different to learning a language at the age of 18 or 19 or older at university. Thankfully though the teaching at university is way better than the teaching of language at high school, there is so much more support and you can go and see your tutors whenever. You can also interact with people who speak those languages fluently, who may want some English help or help in your native language, but there is a lot more opportunity to practice and get to know sort of like the ins and outs and the nuances of the language. Other than just the language, you also study culture modules and this is where people start to get a little bit confused I think. When you go to study a language at university you don't just study the language <laughs> and the number of times that I've had to explain this to people either asking what I studied at university or people even on the course in lower year when I was past freshers is that having just a language is a, you're able to speak it but having culture modules and things that go alongside that round you out as a student and that round you out as a linguist and that round you out as a degree candidate is imperative. You can't just learn a language without learning about the history or the culture that make that language and that culture what it is. 
In my first year I had two culture modules because I had my language core modules for both Korean and Japanese that took up a lot of time and a lot of credits. So I only had two extra culture modules that weren't language in my first year. In first semester that was Environment and Society in East Asia which was a really nice introduction to the way university was marked, the way essays had to be written and the assessment criteria. It was a really nice module to do alongside such intense kind of beginner language modules in my first semester. In second semester the culture module was the history of the two Koreas which is a very important module if you are doing Korean as a major. Um, you cover everything from ancient history sort of like little brother to China, three kingdoms, Queen Min, going into sort of like the Japanese occupation right up to the Korean War. We actually had two veterans come in to speak to us about their experience in the Korean War which was fascinating and then we also covered bits on more modern history, so relationships with North, uh, between North and South Korea, politics, um, relationships with America and things to do with the sunshine policy and more um, up-to-date incidences. And if you're going to live in Korea for any length of time, learning about the history is very, very important. That brings us nicely to my second year. My second year was spent on a full year abroad in Korea. The whole point of a year abroad in a language degree is to go and experience the culture and have a full-on immersive language experience. You're using your Korean every day you are living breathing potentially working in that country and trying to absorb as much of it as you can. I studied at the Yonsei Korean Language Institute since so the Yonde or Hakdang. That's four hours Monday through to Friday of intensive Korean language education. All your Korean lessons are full on in Korean. It is so different to learning Korean in the UK. It was an interesting experience and I've made an awful lot of brilliant friends from it and really enjoyed my time there. It wasn't all sunshine and rainbows but for the most part you learn an awful lot about yourself, you learn an awful lot about your culture and how you're stereotyped in different areas of the world. You also learn a lot about the way life works, the way people are and it also gave me so much empathy and sympathy for people who completely uproot their lives and go and live in a different country permanently because it's so hard. Constantly having to second guess yourself or constantly having that you understand but people don't quite understand you and the sort of the shyness you get for making mistakes and offending people. It makes you so more culturally aware. <laughs> I feel that I'm a way more rounded person than I was having come back from Korea than before I went. I grew up massively on my year abroad and I feel that if you don't you've kind of done something a little bit wrong. But yeah I thoroughly enjoyed it. I think it's a fab experience to have. I don't think it should be a motivator to study a language to sort of have a bit of a less expensive holiday for a year but if you are interested in travel or interested in cultures I think it's a really good experience to have. Moving on to my third year at university that was the year I decided to switch from two languages to East Asian studies. It was a decision I actually made halfway through my year abroad when I realised that my love of learning languages had been overtaken by my love of learning about culture. Um, I felt that if I continued on into sort of my third and final year doing either a pure language for Korean or a dual language for Korean and Japanese that really I wouldn't have had the time or the dedication to sort of like the culture modules that I wanted to spend. You get to a saturation point and I think at that point I'd reached that stage where I was comfortable enough in my Korean ability where I was pretty conversationally fluent that adding more to that at that stage would have probably been more detrimental to me and going back to being really scared to speak in England wasn't ideal. So I made the decision to switch. My university and my degree tutors were really, really nice about it. I found it quite hard to come to terms with the fact that I actually had switched degrees. Sort of going from languages to no languages felt a bit like a failure, but it actually transpired to be one of the best decisions that I've ever made in my entire life. I was way less stressed and just generally happier with the decisions and with the amount that I could actually get out of my university 
experience. It allowed me to study more about the culture and more about the area that I really wanted to learn about. My third year modules, I did three in my first semester and three in my second semester. Again, they're all 20 credit modules, so in university terms that is about 180-ish hours of outside reading. I think it's like 170 hours of outside reading and then your classes uh, added on to that. In my first semester I did more Japanese modules which was interesting because I hadn't actually done a Japanese related module other than language. I did contemporary Japanese society which was a look at how Japan had evolved after the end of World War II. Lots of reading, but fascinating reading. My second Japan focus module was post-war Japanese politics. Hadn't done any politics modules before. I didn't really have an interest in politics, even sort of Western politics before that module, but that was really interesting. And I also took my first China related module in that semester too, which was urbanization in China, which looked at the growth of cities and population right from ancient, ancient history, like really old Chinese cities like Xi'an and sort of like ancient, ancient stuff right through to the current issues they have with migration and towns within cities and the booming housing industry. Very interesting. Um, second semester was more of a mix of East Asia as a whole rather than just sort of like Japan or Korea focused modules. Unfortunately because of the size of the Korean department when I was at university the number of modules available to us that were solely Korea focused wasn't that many so it was sort of if you saw a Korean module and you were interested in Korea you really had to sort of snap that up. In my second semester I did modern Japanese history which was a look at Japan from the Meiji era onwards. International relations in East Asia which was a look at the politics surrounding East Asia as a whole and their relationship with America. Did a lot on the Cold War there, uh, that was really interesting and my third module was my favourite module that I've ever studied at university which was Contemporary Korean Society which was a look at a lot of the issues Korea has as a society currently. So like education, housing, a lot of the issues that actually are from underlying problems during the rapid development of South Korea. That module actually cemented what I wanted to study for my dissertation as well, which brings me nicely into final year. And final year or fourth year of a four year degree is hard, it is tough. Third year for four year degrees is when everything starts to count, so all my module marks in third year counted, all my module marks in final year counted, but all my module marks in final year counted for double. It was a fun and stressful time. In saying that though, my final year was probably one of my favourite years at university. It was the year where I decided to fuck it and do everything. I was social secretary for my university's departmental society. I did a lot of stuff outside. I and alongside that, I had probably the hardest modules that I've ever had to study at university. I mean, if you're going to do it all, why not? The way the final year was split for me was I had 40 credits of dissertation to do over first and second semester and then the other 40 credits per semester were split um, sort of two modules in first semester, two modules in second semester. The modules that I studied in first semester were the two careers and their neighbours which was a look at North Korea, South Korea, their relationship with America, their relationship with Japan and China, and a lot of the relationships between them and a lot of why people went to war and things like that. Very interesting. I don't think I want to go into a career in international relations, but it's a nice, it's something that I found more fascinating than I thought I would do. And the second module that I studied in my first semester was another Japan related module but again something that I'd never done at university before which was um, modern Japanese literature. I hadn't actually done any English or literature related classes since basically GCSE so I was petrified going into that. It's a module that you can't actually do anymore at Sheffield, I do believe. Um, the lecturer that took it has now left, so I don't know if it's going to be like a carry-on or if it's just been axed completely. I have graduated, so I don't know, I'm sorry. But again, it was really interesting to see how Japan has changed through the medium of literature. Second semester was 
basically survive until the end of May, pretty much. The modules that I took there were War and Peace in East Asia, which is a look at the history of East Asia and all the wars that have been there and why they came about and sort of security theory and how threats to society have changed. Um, it was one of those modules where I'd been told by basically everyone who had studied it before me that it was one of the best modules to ever do in the School of East Asian Studies and I did really enjoy it. It was a fab module. And the module I studied alongside that was Business and Management in Contemporary Korea, which was probably after Contemporary Korean Society was probably my second favourite module. Thing, learning about how Korea's business practices have changed or how they haven't changed since the rapid economic development of South Korea. Uh, you learn things like the Jeobol uh, are basically controlling South Korea's economy. It was, it was a pretty solid module to be honest and I'm really glad that I studied it. I have quite a working knowledge of Korean business practice which is useful. Finally, the one of the most important things to do with my degree as a whole was my dissertation. 40 credits of writing, 12,000 words of almost absolute hell. You do it throughout the whole of your year if you're doing sort of like the full dissertation. You do have the option to do a half dissertation if you're doing like a jewel or something or a crazy and want to take on that amount of work in the second semester but for the majority of dissertation candidates you do it for the whole year um, and my topic of study was whether or not young Koreans get plastic surgery to look more Caucasian. Um, I found it pretty fascinating that a lot of the media sells the issue of cosmetic surgery in Korea as a transformative process to make people look more Caucasian. My research disproved that theory but my sample size was quite small. I actually conducted surveys and interviews and things and it was really quite fascinating to actually listen to the Koreans opinions on that hypothesis themselves. I mean some people got really angry about it. But throughout my research and my reading I learned an awful lot about concepts like internalised racism and the beauty salvation myth which is something that I'm actually looking into more now even though I've graduated. It's something that really fascinates me and doing my dissertation has opened up so many different areas that I think, especially as someone who is interested in fashion and beauty in general, that I think is really kind of like intriguing reading. Generally my university life was pretty damn fab. I am happy to answer any questions that you may have. You can hit me up on my social channels which I'm always on if you want me to get back to you super fast. If you want more in-depth answers you can either email me or just ask away down below. If you like this and want to see more of what I do give it a thumbs up or why not subscribe. And that's about it. I shall see you in my next video. Bye!